Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can embed project info inside of our scripts. What I mean by this is essentially we're going to store an entire script or set of instructions inside of one line of code in binary format. The overall goal today is to be able to take a script we've already created that has some functions to create a composition and layers and once we run it our goal is to just embed it in the script so that we can create it from scratch. Now a lot of times when you have a script and you have a bunch of say presets like in this case I have this lower third preset example uh, a lot of times people will have dozens of different presets in which they'll have external files to link to. A lot of times users don't want to install these external files or don't want to have to deal with multiple files. So one cool thing we can do is embed other scripts or content inside of our own script. So in this case, I have in binary JSX bin format a previous script, which will generate a lower thirds composition. Then I'm going to go ahead and import it by creating a temporary file, that's just a JSX file. And then we're going to write our JSX bin data, run the file, and when we run it, it's going to execute the code and open up the comp for us. So this is the file that it actually creates. It's basically a JSX file with all of our JSX bin code. The reason we put all of this inside of here is because we need something to run. If we just put in the binary information and said, we want to evaluate this, well, it's not going to work. We actually need to push it into a file. So first, let's take a look at how we can take a pre-existing script or set of instructions and then quickly and easily run slash import that into After Effects. So I often like to use my alert hello.jsx for these kind of things, but I'm going to go ahead and add a few things to it just so we can make sure it's doing more. So I'm just going to do a couple things. Uh, first, I'm going to create a composition, which will be equal to app.project.items.addComp. And following the guide for add comp, we first need a name, a width, a height, a pixel aspect ratio, a duration, let's do 10 seconds, and a frame rate 30. So this will just create a test composition for us. Now let's go ahead and create a test layer. So I'll just say var layer, and we're going to add this layer to our composition layers. We're just going to say add a solid. And again, if I go into my guide and go to add solid, I can see we need the color, name, width, etc. So for the color, I'll just make it white here, 111. The name, we'll just do test solid. And then for the dimensions, I'm just going to do the exact same thing as our composition. All right, so that will create a layer. And lastly, let's just add a quick effect to the layer. So I'll grab my layer.effects and add a property. Let's add uh what should we add let's add let's just add a transform effect which i believe the match name is adobe transform 2. so just to ensure this this is working i'm going to start a fresh project here and make sure that we can create our comp and such i also want to grab my comp and open it in the window so comp.open in viewer and that will just bring it to the front of attention in after Effects. so if i go ahead and run this See, we got an error. Looks like transform two is not proper. So real quick, I'll just create a composition, a layer, and add transform. And this is just a quick little tip. What I do when I don't know something, I just create a new script really quick and I get the data. So in this case, I need to get the effect of this layer, the match name. So I'm gonna grab app.project.activeItem. We're gonna select the comp. We're gonna grab the first layer and the first effect and grab the match name. Then I'll load up my JavaScript console, run it, and it's geometry two, not transform two. So we'll change that to Adobe geometry two. And now start over here, we get a hello, and we also have our new comp called test with our test solid in it. So this is going to be sort of the code that we're going to use and it's going to be our binary code that will execute inside of our script itself without requiring external files. So I'll go ahead and save that. Again, it's on my desktop. Let's not forget that. The next step is to convert it to this binary format. It's a very easy step. I actually need to open the file again, and I'm going to click on export as binary. Then I'm going to just save it. We'll just say alert hello.jsx bin, click on save. And now we have our JSX bin which is in this sort of format with lots of uh, encoded text. 
So next up, let's go ahead and create a new script for our main script here. Create a variable called uh, script, and this is going to be our binary information. Now if I load up my hello.jsx bin and copy it, and go back into my script and paste it, you can see it's actually created multi-line, and it's kind of a pain that we're going to have to go in here and make this all one line. See, we have to go to each line here and make sure it matches up so that it's a valid variable. And one issue you might run into is if you have a giant script that's more than, you know, seven lines of code, this would obviously take forever. So what you can do, you can either create a script to remove all of the enters, or you can use a script that I've previously linked to, which I'll link to again. And that is the binary image encoder. If you go ahead and put in your path here, let's go to C. If you go ahead and put in your path here, I'll put in my desktop, and my path is alert hello dot JSX bin. And now if I run this, it's going to give me a new string with actually the entire bit of data I need. And this time I don't have to remove all of the end lines. Everything will be a single line for us. So again, I'll link this in the description below. You just need to put in the path, uh, then the file name inside of that path, and the output path, because if you have a string too long to put inside of the console here, I also have a folder with a backup where we store it as well. All right, so now that we've got our variable established, this is literally all we need. This is the entire script functionality right here. This entire thing here is our embedded information. So next up, we need to actually run this information. So what I'll do is create a function called import. Uh, I'll just say import script. And inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable called script file. And this is going to be sort of a temporary file we create, run it, and then we're going to delete it. So for this file, we're just going to reference a location, which in this case, let's do our desktop again. So desktop or we can actually create a variable called path where we can predefine our path. So let's actually do that, desktop. And then now instead of saying desktop, I can say path and then add our file name. So what do we want to call this? Let's just call it testscripts.jsx and that should create the file for us. Now I'm going to grab my script file and open it. We want to open it to write so we can write some data inside of it. And then once we have it open, we're going to actually call the function write. And inside of here, we're going to write our script, which is our binary text here. So after we've written the data to our script, we need to actually close the file so we don't have any memory leaks. And then finally, to check that this is working, we just need to call our function import script. Now this should take our text, put it into this JSX file and write it. Now if I load up my test script.jsx it just created, you can see we have our string inside of here. All right, so all that's left to do now is to run our file. So we're going to use the dollar sign operator or the helper object. We're gonna say dollar sign dot eval file. And it's going to just take in an argument of the file. And since we just created the file with all of our data, we'll use our script file. Now it's going to create the file, run it, and now let's go ahead and remove the file. To do this, I'll just grab my script file and I'll say dot remove. And if you're not sure if you can use a certain property, again, you can just check here. It says file dot remove, and we do want to remove a file. All right, so let's go ahead and clear up After Effects here and run the script. You can see we say alert hello, and we now have our test comp with our test solid. And if we go to check if we have our test script.jsx, it's not going to be there because we've gone ahead and said run this file and then remove it. So we're sort of doing silent operations. The user wouldn't even know that there was a bunch of new files being created. So you can take this concept and grow it to as large as you want. I have scripts where I have over 50 of these binary presets and it doesn't actually slow it down that much even though each of these presets uh, is actually thousands of lines of code. So if you don't want to use external files and tell the user that they need to install all of these external files in different folder locations, then go ahead and use this embedding format. But that's going to do it for this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. 
If you've got any ideas for future tutorials or questions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to be notified of new uploads. Thanks again for watching guys, and we will see you in the next one.